Mr. Speaker. Clayton Mitchell. Today, Mr. Speaker, uh, I have removed my yellow ribbon, which I've been wearing for a week, um, and put on a blue ribbon, partially because it's a bit of a sad day, I think, for New Zealand, um, with this bill going to be passed in the House with the in the House with the numbers of support that uh, that the government have to put this through, and also partly to acknowledge um, the importance to be aware of prostate cancer, and we're wearing them a little bit early to think about thinking ahead. And to avoid a Freudian slip, I think it's important to go for those annual checkups and uh, make sure you keep yourself safe. Mr. Speaker, it is a very sad day. Um, the Transport and Industrial Relations Select Committee, I think, I've, I've really enjoyed uh, the last 11 months working with a number of the colleagues. It was great that Judith Collins uh, removed herself and went to another select committee, and I thought that we got more work done and it was far more productive. But, uh, Mr. Speaker, I think we have left that chamber uh, in those discussions many times a little bit bewildered and confused, and certainly I have, um, about the lack of common sense that the government is showing, a little bit of ignorance perhaps um, around what constitutes health and safety. And I've heard from a, only a few members in the, uh, in the hip debate of the whole House with regards to what makes up New Zealand's workforce. And I think, Mr Bailey, you summed it up beautifully when you said that 97% of New Zealand uh, is actually made up of small and medium-sized businesses. And that works out to be around about a third of the entire workforce of people employed in New Zealand are actually employed in those small and medium uh, businesses. 30 per cent. And the reality is 30 per cent of peop people under this new legislation will not have any new safety conditions put imposed on them. And there will be no ground up, no culture change within those businesses to actually help those businesses uh, look after their workers. And in actual fact, if we looked at the existing bill that sits at the moment, had we gone back and had the foresight to adjust and change that legislation, Mr Speaker, we would actually um, see that it needed some serious tidying and titivating, and the reality is we would get better engagement from workers and we obviously need some better funding to ensure that we had those health and safety inspectors. I think this government sold themselves short. It's a yeah, yeah, nah kind of new piece of legislation. It's the same, same, but different in the reality of things. Mr Ian Lees Galloway, I have to say, you know, there was a very, very powerful speech, and I absolutely support um, where the Labor Party have been, although I have to give you a bit of a smack and say, you know, you, the reality is you're talking about harm minimisation in the or, workplace. Or, order, order. Um, suggesting, suggesting you might give me a smack is probably not a good oh, idea. Mr. Speaker. It's got a bit of history. <laughs> Metaphor I do apologise, Mr. Speaker. And that was, of course, metaphorically a, a, a verbal. Uh, you know, I was talking verbally, and I certainly wasn't referring to you, Mr. Speaker. The, re the reality is, though, there was an opportunity for the Labor Party to stand up and support one of our amendments, a very powerful amendment, which was to reduce the numbers of workers in a workplace that required to get engagement for a health and safety representative. And there was an opportunity to reduce that from 20 workers down to 10 workers, which would have actually had a massive impact on those small and medium-sized businesses and would have actually got the engagement down to only about 10% 10 10 of the working population that wouldn't have been eligible to have a health and safety representative. And yet there was no noise. There was no noise from this side of the House or from the Greens to support that um, balanced out situation. Now, again, I would like to commend okay. Labor for their support with our amendment in relation to getting the government to front foot the costs of health and safety representatives. We understand in New Zealand First that it is the right way to get proper engagement and a culture shift from the bottom up. We need those health and safety representatives. But there is an ever-increasing cost of um, running these small businesses that I think we could have avoided by simply getting the government to fund the cost of the courses for the health and safety representatives, cover the, the travel and fair and reasonable costs associated with that training. Now, in actual fact, that was a, a minor cost, but front-footing it, it would actually make a huge difference. And the intention of this bill is to reduce the amount of fatalities and work-related fatalities and harm in workplaces, Mr Speaker, by 25 per cent over the next five years. But why not 40 per cent? Why not 60 per cent? Why not 100 per cent? Why can we sell ourselves so short, being so short-sighted, to actually not think about what would make a real difference to all workplaces in this country and set the bar so low that we think only 25 per cent could be actually achieved? 
And at the same time we could achieve those much lower fatalities in our workplace, Mr Speaker, it doesn't have to be at the expense and the cost of small and medium-sized businesses who will be feeling the extra cost of compliance and the squeeze on those small and medium-sized businesses. And let, let me run you through another one of our supplementary orders, 110, supplementary order paper 110. And section 28, which was to uh, remedy the uh, issue around personal protective equipment. Currently, the legislation is, and it will be with this new legislation, that no worker could Im be imposed a levy on for their personal protective equipment. We Again, we absolutely commend that. They shouldn't have to cover the cost of their personal protective equipment. But again, we say, what about personal responsibility? What about putting an amendment in to ensure that those workers look after that equipment? Now that's not too onerous to expect a worker to look after their safety goggles, hats, work boots, high-vis jackets, and if they don't, a small levy or charge to cover the cost of that personal protective equipment could be charged. But no, the National Government didn't support it. It was gone into the ether. And that, I think, Mr Speaker, will come back in spades against this Government with this new legislation. Again, when I look down at the number of legislation uh, amendments that we've put through, I'd just like to go through those. Clause 29AA, to remove this clause, currently this will have a massive effect. 29AA basically removes, not basically, absolutely removes the right for a, an employer, a PCBU if you want to use your acronyms, to actually protect themselves on a financial basis. Now, the reality is, if you're going to be seconded onto a board, Right, where you might have two or three hundred, five or six hundred staff. Order, order. Mr. Order. Speaker, I apologise. Yeah, the member has been here for some time now, and I think I think he just has got to get out of that habit of bringing the speaker into debate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I shall uh, refrain from that um, that term. The reality is, if you can, um, if that is removed, 29AA, you nearly got me again. I tell you, yeah, I can see you. Right, to remove 29AA would make a huge difference. Um, by being able to indemnify a board member who sits on a board, Mr Speaker. And to have that in there now makes it very difficult and very onerous on people taking on those responsibilities of large organisations like council-controlled organisations. That, Mr. Mr Speaker, I think should be in this legislation and is one of the things that makes it very difficult for us. In fact, we were so close to supporting this. We thought if we could get to the point that some of these amendments were, uh, were agreed to by the government, we would actually be 100 per cent behind this bill. But we might as well be a million miles away. We are so far away because we've missed out on so much of the positive that we could change. Mr Speaker, the next clause I bring to is Clause 43. Now, this is going to largely affect all of those spouses, husbands and wives partners in a farming situation. The situation where a husband is out on the farm and has an accidental death um, and, and uh, he loses his life. It might be because of a quad bike or it might be because of a tractor. We don't want to go into the details. Mr Speaker, under this new legislation, as a PCBU and a worker, the wife will be legally culpable and could be up to some very hefty fines and ultimately could leave the, the spouse left without a farm as well as left without a husband. This, Mr Speaker, is some of the unintended or one of the very important unintended consequences of this Act that we have tried to remove by putting in Clause 43. Then we go down the, uh, down the page to 65AA, Mr Speaker, which we've spoken about, which is to cover the training costs. If we had 100 per cent engagement, and we, we supported, uh, had they had got it through Labor, saying that if there was going to be no incurred costs to the employer, then we would support there being no limit to when we can have engagement with a, uh, a, a representative. Clause 65 um, and 66 is about the work groups. It was a minor amendment, but in a situation where you have a, um, a disagreement with the worker and the boss, and they can't decide what is going to constitute a work group, we have simply said it would make sense to get an independent arbitrator in to actually determine what that work group is going to be, and that would be WorkSafe. And just to finish off, Mr Speaker, I would just like to say that we are also very concerned on the unintended consequences about well-intentioned voluntary acts. 
So you've got a farmer, he's just finished off for the day, he's clocked out and he's heading home and on the way home he sees some animals on the side of the road and he wants to get them back into a pen. And if in the event of an accident occurring with the stock running onto the road and causing an accident or vice versa, we want to protect those small businesses and those farms and unfortunately we cannot support this bill the way it sits in the House today. Thank you Mr Speaker. Thank you, certainly not Andrew Darris.